Got to beat me dead, sorry. Thanks, Joe. Okay, so I got 3.30 again. Uh, let me call to order the May 24th, 2022 meeting of the Ways and Means Committee of the Orange County Legislature. Please note this meeting is being transmitted live by video stream. The public can find a link to this video stream by visiting the Orange County website, www.orangecountygov.com, clicking on the tab for the legislature and locating, locating the Ways and Means Committee meeting on the calendar. Uh, please, as well as always, please silence your cell phones, tablets, or other electronic devices. And as a note, be mindful that the microphones here are very sensitive and they will pick up uh, other extraneous uh, conversations. So at this time, please rise and join me for a moment of silent reflection, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, carry on roll call, please. Nagasakis, Russia. Here. O'Donnell. Here. Hine. Here. Toto. Here. Padu. Here. Jeannie. Here. Benton. Here. One absent. Thank you. First up, Rachel Wilson, director of the Youth Bureau. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, so A, we have is a request to accept an appropriate funding received from the New York State Office of Children and Family Services to provide youth sports and education activities. Motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Duke and O'Donnell. Can you please add me, please? Sure. Thank you. This is additional funding that was put in the governor's budget. Uh, it is funding that comes from the passing of the legalization of sports betting. So they are now putting funding on the prevention end of empowering youth in sports and fitness programming. So this was not in our budget originally, so we're bringing this forward. Okay. Anything else? That's basically it. That's basically it. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell. What was the form state population? I think they used population formulas uh, per community. So we received 22,000, other counties received more or less. Right. And this is the first round of a million dollars across the state. They are anticipating $5 million in the next budget. Those by population? I believe so. Okay. I, I'll confirm that. If it's wrong, I'll let you know. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Padu? Thank you. You have a you don't have a plan here yet. You just found out about the funding, right? Or... Well, I knew that the funding was coming, just not the dollar amount. I'm the first vice president on the state association and we were part of meetings with the Office of Children and Family Services. So when we did our request for proposals for 2022, we added in there the funding categories we knew we had, and we added that there could be additional funding coming from the state. And literally the day that our board was voting was when the state told us the dollar amount. But we had already identified what programs okay. could potentially fit for it. Originally, we thought we'd get five or 10,000. So we were very happy, we budgeted for more, of course. Um, so we gave programs our traditional youth development program funding from the state, our solutions county funding from the county, and we have some earmarked for this. So you well. just supplemented with some of that money you gave yes. for your budget? We were able, well, not not so much that we switched categories of funding first i had them in the solutions category so now i moved them out of county funding to the state and now we have a, an rfp that was just posted today for the balance that we had by this money offset. okay thank you okay any other questions ms benelli thank you mr chairman if you refer to the attached document it does say it's by population of eligible thank you, for your thank you and i was also going to uh announce if you didn't raise your hand that the chairwoman of the legislature Ms. benelli is also in attendance today all right any other questions hearing none all in favor as presented Aye. Uh, Aye. opposed Carried. Thank you. 
B is a request to accept and appropriate funding received from Orange County Youth Bureau 600 fund. This is to cover expenses related to the 2022, um, 2022 annual youth awards luncheon, which includes trophies, plaques, and other monetary awards, uh, totaling $2,300. Motion in a second, please. So moved. Pressure, total. So this, we had, traditionally provided monetary awards to you um, that had come out of county taxation for many years. We removed it from county taxation and we used funding from the Friends of the Orange County Youth Bureau Fund at the Community Foundation. Uh, there was not enough in there this year uh, to fulfill everything. And we do have money still in the 600 fund that board members had gotten over the years. Uh, so this is just a formality to transfer some of that over. It's not county taxation. It was all based on donations from past years. Okay. Questions? Mr. You say your monetary awards are like that scholarship monies? Yeah, oftentimes it'll go to high schoolers that might use it to buy a laptop or other supplies for school. It's not officially a scholarship. It doesn't go right to a college. Um, and not all of the youth go on to college. Um, some may use it for other things that they need. Uh, we have different categories, uh, and some are middle school youth. And depending on what age, there's a different a dollar amount based on what the awards committee wants to do for fundraising. Do you uh, uh, make the students prove that they brought a computer or brought something essential? Or we don't something hear what it goes to. It's sometimes we hear stories that that's what it went to. It's really just whatever they might need or want to use to celebrate their accomplishments. Okay. Don't you think we maybe should have some oversight to make sure they uh, don't go out and buy a new pair of jeans or? Well, some need that too because well, they're more needing clues. Yeah, I understand that, but I would think you would. I would like to know what they're doing with the money. Uh, Mr. Chain? Yeah. Um, what did they? Why did they receive the award? What, what? So there's a few categories that have a first, second, third place. Some are positive change leading to success, uh, and that's for grades two to eight and grades nine to twelve. Those are youth who have overcome major obstacles in their lives. Many have incarcerated parents or they've um, one could be on probation and they've turned their life around. We've had in the past teen parents who have finished high school. Uh, so those are one category. All youth get a certificate of honor, uh, but some the, the awards committee votes on their applications and selects top three. The other ones that receive monetary awards are outstanding youth volunteers, and they've been nominated because they've just gone above and beyond in their volunteering and making a difference in their communities. And how much are the individual awards? It ranges depending on how much fundraising the board is planning on doing that year. Uh, typically, it could be in the middle school ages, ranging between 100 to 200, 300, from third place up to first place. In the older age group, it's gone up to about 600. I don't think it's ever gone more than 700 at that high. I, I don't. I don't know that, given the small size of the awards, and you know, we put it and trusted it to to people to, you know, look and see why, why those awards are are appropriate. I, I I don't think it's something we need to get into a whole account program for, uh, given the size. Ms. Tota. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You said fundraising, so this is due to what you've raised as funds and not out of county taxation. Yeah, none of this is county taxation. So can we really oversee what's being raised uh, under fundraising on such a small award? It's not <clears throat> county tax dollar. Well, it's her department. Yeah. And we oversee her department. Right. And we make policy. So we could if we want to. Okay. That was just a question. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried, thank you. C is a request to accept and appropriate funding received from the Friends of the Orange County Youth Bureau, a component fund of the Community Foundation of Orange and Sullivan for awards, monetary, and gift cards associated with the County Executive Youth Awards for 2022. This is also in the amount of $3,500. Motion in a second, please. Second. Donald okay. Cheney. So this is all pretty much what I just explained. This was the, the first pot of money that we received, but we didn't have enough for its full amount, and we had to tap into the 600 fund. 
the board is still in the process of doing fundraising. They actually just raised 1200 from Hudson Valley Gives, but that was before this was. was done. Questions? No, this is from the Community Foundation. This one. Yes. The last one was the 600. The last one was the 600 fund. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, all right. right, next up. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I would just like to thank you for adding this to your agenda today. And last minute, we did not have a forum last week for you. And this was something that was on your agenda. And we just like to talk about that. Yes, you. thank you. We appreciate yes, it. Take care. No Thanks. problem at all. No problem at all. Hey, Matt. Number one, resolution approving the release of the county's interest in and to certain deed sale parcels to the previous owners of record. Motion in the second, please. Uh, Mr. Paduke, Mr. Hines. We had a tax auction a couple of weeks ago that uh, sold not quite well, uh, but a lot of people came in and made payments uh, down. And um, we have a new large list of uh, projects for big chair, and as always, the past that the committee allows to uh, vacate the deed and judgment and get, get the property back uh, to the original uh, Okay, great. We always try to do that. What was probably the total amount of? Uh, this list. Uh, I have no idea, but I'm sure it's quite a bit. Yeah, I, with this many people, I'm sure it yeah. would seem like it would be. There were some large numbers. I talked to a few of these people, the uh, attorneys for a few of these people. There were some fairly large numbers at stake. So I'm sure there's a lot of money coming. Okay. Any questions from committee members? Not on this, but we have to do <laughs> And no questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Mr. Dunn? Yeah, so Matt, you were here last month when we had the big issue with the property in Garcia. And uh, it was unbeknownst to me that we had two separate policies on selling property one with 11 votes and one with 14 votes. Can you explain the difference in that? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I, 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 are you asking for an interpretation of local law two, 2010? That's what made it 11. Right. So why did we go to that? Do you know? I believe that was advice from the legislative council. Back in 2010? No, from, no, why it was drafted that way in 2010, I don't, uh, I, I, I can't <laughs> speak to that, I believe that was. I don't I don't know that there was any if you're asking for legislative history issues from 12 years ago I don't know that there was any debate or or I thought I think it was just thought that it would be easier just that's fine you don't know you don't know but can you get us the answer by next night because you are in-house expert is this something that should go to rules and ways it means for well, next I'm month just as well that we have two separate numbers for selling county property and I think it should be one that, that's the first I remember knowing that on one set of properties, it's just 11, it seems, with those that are on the auction block, and the other is 14, like we sold yeah. the properties in uh, Newburgh on Grand Street. I just think that we should know why it's two separate and maybe address it to have just one consistent. There's got to be a history. I didn't have time to call McCary today, but he's the guy who probably knows the history behind it. But I'm not even sure if he was real property in 2010 or not. He would have been. Yeah. I think he was. I think he was. Right. I believe he was. Right. He okay. Was so, executive at the time. So, <laughs> I, I think right, really. we have a homework project for. Uh, it was, it was, it was, for uh, this for this answer to come back to uh, I probably should go to rules and ways and means for uh, next month and we'll let Betsy know as well. To... Yeah, unfortunately, Betsy couldn't be here today, yeah. but I have had conversations with her about this. And I think between her and Matt and a lot of these, uh, 
they should come up with clearer. Okay. All right. Good. And, and I did have a Sorry. None. Just that I agree with you. Well, thanks. <laughs> and the other question I had a conversation with Paul last week on this is uh, to make sure what happened last month doesn't happen again. We have to have a better coordination with whoever's putting these properties on the auction block to get them off the auction block so somebody can't be on. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have an next, but I'll wait till you get up here. But. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Just a question. Nice. You mentioned the college properties, but we own the college properties prior. These are for maybe the 11 vote is for just these. If they haven't, oh, if we don't own them yet, uh, we're released to. No, one of the specific questions I asked last month do we own these properties right now? And the answer was yes, and we still needed just to let them vote. So that's why it's a concern. Okay, yeah, I, no, I, I, I yeah. specifically asked back last month. Yeah, because with the process, these properties right now. Yes. Yeah, because with this process, when we take, we literally. When they don't pay, we take that. That means we, we take possession them. and we own them. Yeah. So that's why we have to release any uh, any of our rights via this proposal, Mr. Chainer. I, I realize our legislative council isn't here, but I'm curious. When in in the process of the auction, when does the county actually take ownership of the property? There's a. Uh, the court is an exemption date, and once that passes, we move, we uh, apply to the court for a judgment. So, court so ahead of the auction. Yeah, well, yeah. Then once the court grants that judgment, uh, the the a deed is issued by the uh, commissioner of finance, uh, which is odd, but it's the statutory. It's from Article Eleven of the Real Property Tax Law. Who, who and, and when, once that deed is, is is recorded, then the county owns owns the property, right. and then we go to the auction. Yes, yes. So it's ahead of the auction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. By more than an hour. Well, <laughs> many, many, many months ahead of the auction. Yeah. Right. Generally, but we do. But we do allow people to redeem their properties yeah. Yeah. within the hour. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Well, Benelli. It may be attributed to. That some of these transactions are by local law okay. and some are done by resolutions. And that could answer the difference in the amount of votes needed. And also, as far as this is, this was a very unique situation in that the Ways and Means Committee did not take action and just let those sit. So the next time they could view it wasn't going to be enough time before the auction. And all is aware of that, so we're going to try to avoid that in the future and not make it such a tight window. So, so those are some of the things that have been. Mm -hmm. done. We'll have a full discussion on this at Rules and Ways and Means next month. Excellent. Okay, so we approved this. So I think you're done, Matt. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Okay, Paul Wally. Acting Director of Real Property. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, all. Okay, A is a request to reclassify part time assessor's assistant in uh, the village of Palm Tree to a grade eight position uh, and to full time. Motion and a second for discussion. Laurie? Second, Mr. O'Donnell. Paul? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this one is to as it says, to uh, take an assessor's assistant position for palm tree and uh, turn it from part time into full time. Uh, we have an intermunicipal agreement with the town of palm tree to provide the assessment services. And the uh, municipality is growing so quickly that we need to basically add more, more uh, work time to get through all the uh, demands of the increase in the number of parcels. So what we're proposing is uh, to turn the assessor's assistant part time to full time to give them enough time to get through the list of parcels. The, um, the number of parcels in the town is expanding incredibly rapidly. Um, Eric had put together some analysis before he left, and we were looking at about a 60 to 65 percent increase in the number of parcels in one to two year period, which is a dramatic increase anyway. 
So what we already have within this agreement is the uh, plan for them to pay for the two full-time positions between the assessor and the assessor's assistant, which uh, went into contract for this year. So they're just basically executing it. Ms. Tuck Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to know publicly that this is covered fully by the contract and there's no county taxation dollars being spent on this. Correct. It's covered by the contract. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, B. A homeowner in the town of Blooming Grove contends that they used an online bill payment service to send a check in September to pay their 2021-2022 Monroe Woodbury school tax bill. The check was never received by the school and was not cashed, and the funds were returned to their account on 12-28-21. The school taxes were then relevied onto the January 1, 2022 county and town bill with appropriate penalty. The homeowner submitted proof that the check was drawn from their account, but their records also show that the check was sent to the old address for Monroe Woodbury's tax processing and not the correct address for the 2021-2022. Although the school has admitted some problems receiving and possessing processing, I should say, certain payments this year and chose to refund their 3% share of this homeowner's penalties, that is not the case here. The check was sent to the wrong address. As there are no provisions in the real property tax law to support, that support a correction or to waive the penalties and interest when a taxpayer sends their payment to the incorrect address, the recommendation is that the application for correction of error be denied as no error was made by the county or the school. Motion in the second for discussion, please. Totel, second. Pressure. Paul. Oh, well, thank you. That actually pretty much sums it up. Yeah. Completely. Um, we have had we had similar situations with some uh, taxpayers who have contended that they have paid their school bills, and in one or two of the school districts, there have been some issues. In this case, the, the school merely changed the address of where they were having their their taxes uh, processed, and this taxpayer used an online bill service that they should not be using because there's no proof that the bill was ever sent in. Um, there's no USPS uh, receipt or anything like that. And then also they sent it to the previous year's address. And so it didn't get where it was supposed to go. So I know that uh, he's upset that he has to pay the interest and penalties, but he used an online bill service he should not have to send his check to the wrong location. There's nothing that, that in the real property tax law that we can do about this. The beef should be with the homeowner and the uh, monetary payment service. Perhaps, but still he directed but it to us. the wrong address. So if anything, he's made a mistake that he, unfortunately he has to pay for. Mr. O'Donnell. How much money are we talking about? I believe it was about a eight hundred dollars in change. Our share of oh correct. Our share of it might be about the eight hundred and with the three percent on top, maybe it was about eleven hundred. That's the number that uh, I seem to recall earlier. But the school did refund him his money, as he did for just about everyone else that had complained. But once again, there's nothing in the real property tax law that allows us to consider this an error on our part. You know, I went to school, refunded it. It was probably about $300. $300? Yeah. I can, I can check and find out about that. So your penalties are less than our penalties? And yeah, in this case, for uh, for the overdue school taxes, yes, they're 3% and we are 7%. Mr. Chairman, the hold on, hold on, hold on, Mr. Downey. No, that's it. So, our our penalties are more than the school's penalties, and the school share of the taxes that he submitted is like ninety percent of the bill. Our uh, school share would be. So we tax him. Uh, we penalize him on the school portion of the taxes. Yes, we we, we penalize him. We make them whole. Right. Yeah, well, he that's paid because it. he paid the school taxes. So we're, we're now charging the guy penalties on your pay there. You know what I'm talking about? That say the bill is ten thousand dollars, right? And nine thousand is the schools. He's whole, right? So it's not a question of we make anybody whole. He's whole. 
It's just a question of penalties. And what I'm hearing now is we penalize people on this, the whole tax bill, the school tax bill, not just ours. All right. So mm -hmm. our portion of it, say, was 10%, say it was $10,000. And we charge them 7% on the 100000 So I don't know whether that's fair, seeing as the school never was out the money or refunded their piece of it. I don't know how we get away with the whole thing. I can see if nothing was paid, then we make somebody whole, we get everything. But in this particular case, I don't know. So. Ms. Tartel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so I'm looking at the tax bill here and the school assessed uh, 2% uh, if it was paid monthly and then another 3% if it was paid after another month of that. What is our percentage of intra penalty, interest penalty? Oh, I'm, I apologize. I don't know the percentage off the top of my head. Okay, so what, so he paid his $12,427.25, the principal on the tax bill to the school district already? Uh, well, I believe he paid the revenue amount of 13 cents. 15 cents. 1570. So we paid the late amount because again it says they didn't get it. They didn't get it. So uh, the school you levy on the bill shows as 13696. Uh, and change plus a penalty. Okay. Because you had, in the beginning I thought you had said that they they forgave the penalty. They did not. They, uh, the school refunded refunded their share of the penalty okay. after that. Their share of the penalty. Okay. And then we we are now in question of how much money exactly that's our share of the penalty. It's uh, somewhere around eight or nine hundred dollars. Eleven hundred dollars. No, eight or nine hundred. I'm sorry. It eight was or probably 900. eleven or twelve hundred to right. begin with. The school refunded, <laughs> and so we would be balanced at approximately eight hundred dollars. Okay. So what this is asking is they're asking us the the homeowner in question or taxpayer in question is asking us to forgive that portion of the interest, our portion of the interest? What they're asking me to do is consider a correction of error. And I cannot, by law, cannot do that. There's been no error on the assessor's part, the school's part, or our part. So therefore, I cannot advocate that we allow that you know, error to be corrected. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I understood sure. correctly. Thank you. So, Paul, uh, for next month, um, can you also give us a small report on these interest rates that are charged? Yes. As the penalty, penalty. fees? Certainly. Not an interest rate. It's a, it's well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a penalty fee with, an, with a rate. Percentage. Right. Percentage. Yeah, a small report would be great. Sure. Okay. Okay, Mr. Donald. And while you're doing that, can you give us uh, a report on what online payment is acceptable and what isn't? You say it was unacceptable. Uh, the different school districts have different means of uh, accepting online payments. Um, I could look into some of them that they do, but I can't necessarily tell you that all of them are accepting. It's up to the school district how they do it. So I, I could look at it and see how they do it, but it's going to be up to. So in this particular case, they didn't accept the online? Um, according to well, Chase Bank. Good. Chase Bank itself says not to use that particular version of online payment to pay taxes. It's right in their uh, terms and agreements. We did check on that to make sure. Um, and one of the reasons why is because they can't provide proof that a tax bill is paid to the correct uh, entity. So they recommend it. There is a, a, a means that Chase does provide for online tax payment, but uh, this homeowner did not use it. And of course, every Every different bank and every different school is going to have a variety of different online payments available. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other, any other questions on the present as presented? No more questions? Hearing none, all in favor as presented? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Yeah. Carried? I'm, I'm opposed. Opposed? One, one no. Thank you, Mr. O'Donnell. Okay, on to C. This is a request that a certain property be retained for open space purposes as it was not redeemed by the owner prior to the redemption date of May 4, 2022. 
The property is a six acre vacant landlocked parcel. It is along the northwest side of the Mount Eve Preserve near Pine Island in the town of Warwick. The Orange County Land Trust is interested in acquiring the property to add to the preserve. The back, back taxes on the property are approximately uh, $1,200. Motion and second, please, Mr. Moved. Cheney. Mr. Paduke and Tortel. Paul. Okay, exactly as stated. This is um, uh, as the uh, county executive has requested. Um, when a property is desired for open space, if possible, <laughs> if it's not redeemed by the time of the auction, it be allowed to be um, set aside for open space. Uh, Orange County Land Trust had asked about this property, but not in time for them to to do anything about it as far as uh, getting a request in last month, um, or in time for them to put a bid together uh, for the auction. So uh, per the county executive's office, uh, we were asked to pull this property uh, from the auction if it wasn't redeemed, and it was not redeemed. And so here it is, uh, and we pulled it from the auction at that point. So this property isn't uh, surrounded entirely by forest or preserve or? That's, uh, um, I'm not sure if you understand that, but I do. And if they're not in color, I apologize. Yeah, not a, just not a good. Uh, that looks like the property at night. It's black and white. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so I, and I apologize for that. But the, uh, okay. the property is um, on three sides. is surrounded by the Mount Beach Preserve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Land Trust okay. okay. Yeah. And um, the back of it is um, another private lot, but uh, the property is otherwise landlocked. Mm -hmm. And um, vacant land, uh, wooded, and um, the preserve would like this. Um, to expand the uh, okay. Questions, Ms. Hotel. This is the same property that we discussed last month that we're talking about. We pulled from the auction, right? Um, no, it's not. Uh, that was a different property, and uh, this one was was going to be. Um, we we're hoping to have it pulled, but it was not presented. In time. Okay, so what's the status of the property that we pulled last month? That's not on the that's not on the agenda. We're discussing this property today. Uh, I thought it was taken care of. It was not on the agenda. There were two so. separate resolutions yeah. that addressed that property. So it was taken care of last month, was my understanding. May I answer? Sure. Uh, that was purchased by the town of Tuxedo. The uh, okay. there was, another, was there another property in Tennessee? Uh, that one was redeemed. So that, oh, so it dropped off the list because it was redeemed. Okay, questions on this parcel, Mr. Paduke. The land trust will they pay the back taxes? Yes, that would just be it. what they are. There's no I mean, twelve hundred dollars. That's what it would be. They could have bid higher, right? I mean, if it, if it did go. Correct. Um, I, I, but I'm under the impression that the rules would be that they have to at least cover the back taxes. Twelve hundred dollars may have been last month. It may be a little bit higher now. Uh, okay. but that was just a number at that time. Thank you, okay. Mr. O'Donnell. So nobody bid on this. Um. If, when did you pull it from the auction? The morning of the auction. Before, uh, before, the, before the auction finished. Which, That's different. Uh, was it before the auction opened? No, the au auction opened actually three days before. So it was on. Yes. And nobody figured out. I'm not sure about that. It, it, is, possible, okay. it is possible that there were bids on it. But the uh, auction right, closed. This goes in there. This well, goes into exactly that everything had, should be pulled time, before. Okay. That's right. Right. One day before. Hey, we can't be having this stuff, and it comes to the legislature, and we're the ones that ask all the questions and look like we don't have all the facts. All right. This stuff has to stop before it gets to us. All right. So, exactly. you guys got to get this is what I had a conversation with you. Matt, you're the expert on the county's next side. So, I'm telling you, get your act together. May I right? explain? All right. Yeah, go ahead. We allow the last minute uh, for redemption as late as possible. In this case, if the auction was on May 5th, we allowed until the, the afternoon or evening of May 4th. We don't pull the properties until the morning of the auction to allow any kind of last minute checks or redemptions that come in, like right at five o'clock or something, to be processed. So that way in the morning, we know that we can pull them before the auction closes. It's not about when the auction opens, it's about when the auction closes. We could move the redemption date earlier and then make it so that four or five days before or in the cases of some other properties in other counties, they use a month or two before. We have chosen to allow the maximum time for taxpayers to redeem their properties and get them back. I agree with that policy. The problem is that you then don't have enough time for the auction. 
So you either don't open the auction until the day of the auction closing, in which case then you're somewhat crippling the ability for the auction to actually take place. We had over 200 properties. It took hours to get them through as it was. So it's not that we're doing anything wrong. And it's not that we're doing anything <laughs> What we're doing is allowing the maximum time for people to redeem their property, which does not allow much time for the auction. So we either move the redemption date up and make it so people can't redeem their property, you know, cut down that time to allow more time for the auction, or we do what we're doing. The auction goes until the night before, I mean, I'm sorry, the redemption goes up until the night before the auction, then the auction opens on that day. What we did this time, and I know that it caused a little bit of controversy, was that the properties were pulled in the morning of the auction between 9 and 10 o'clock, because offices don't open until 9 o'clock. Emails are sent with all the different latest information, so we have the absolute maximum time for people to redeem their properties, to make sure that the checks get in, to finance, that we call it to finance at 9 o'clock in the morning to make sure that every check has been processed, every person who has a chance to redeem their property has redeemed it. The auction doesn't start closing until 11 o'clock. It's only two hours, I know, but it's enough time for us to call the auction company, send them the latest information for them to pull it. And that's what happened here. I do realize that there are properties that are going to be bid upon because they're there, but for the most part. Okay, so last time, I think there was properties that were bid on and then got pulled. All right. So this time, I don't know whether people bid on this property. You said they may have, they may not have. But what you just told me, and I had a conversation with you last week about how do we make sure this doesn't happen again. So your explanation, and I think you said you agree with it, is that you're not changing anything. Okay? And I find that unacceptable. Okay? So I think you and Matt have a conversation with the county exec side, and then you get together with the Lee and whoever in rules is Paul, and come up with some type of solution because we just can't have these conversations every time we have an auction. Yeah, I mean, I could say I believe that uh, five o'clock the night, the afternoon before the uh, auction would be appropriate as the drop dead time for the person to get their money here. That gives us overnight to take and pull and make the email to the auction house that. These should be pulled for tomorrow's auction. And then the next day, all emails rejected. You should not even answer them. If somebody says, ooh, ooh, uh, oh, let me put my money in, let me make an offer now. No, no, too late. It goes to auction because they missed the five o'clock deadline. Allowing to take the morning of the auction, something that comes in on an email at nine to 10 o'clock, that's the error, that's, that's what's wrong because you've ex now extended it to the next day for the deadline to pay. They should just be told, sorry, we can't accept this email. You're late. It's going to auction. You want it, bid on it. I just think that it has to have uh, plenty of discussion that we can yeah. right here. And, so please, and that's kind of what I thought the policy was, not you know, you know, know, trying to give somebody a chance to get it back at nine o'clock in the morning. My, that's my personal thing, so I agree. This will be another future discussion for uh, policy. Okay. Oh, oh, go ahead. Just along that it. line. So who pulled this form, this part? The county executive asked you to pull it because the land trust was interested in it? Um, How can he do it? We own the property, not the county executive. Um, How can he ask you to do that? I believe we're talking about multiple different properties now. Um, our discussion was about the property in the town of Tuxedo. And, um, um, uh, or, was, more general, yeah, general, and just like this. Yeah, one. Okay. we're not getting general. Okay. Okay. Into a specific so, so yeah. land, policy, right? The land trust, the land trust contacted the county sure. exactly. talking about a specific and said, piece of hey, and you pulled that if this morning because we're interested. In it. Right. That's how it went down. Exactly. Well, how yeah. can that happen? The county executive doesn't own the property in this county. We own it. Uh, I'm not the sure exactly the local law agency. number, but uh, there is the agency. And the, yeah, the county executive um, does have the ability to uh, ask for a property to be pulled from the auction for open space purposes and a, a few other purposes also. Really? Can we have that list? I'd like to know what that's Sure. Yeah, you could send that to Jean so that she can send it to everybody when you get a chance. Sure. Um, but I'd like to say that what we're, what we're asking for here is basically what we're doing. The only question is whether or not we can get people to work overnight to do what you're asking. 
So five o'clock is when the end, the redemption period basically ends. Um, actually, according to uh, the unofficial rules, it was three o'clock on that afternoon. But I believe okay. payments that might come in between three and five o'clock were accepted. Yep. It's not until nine o'clock in the morning when people come back into the office and we say, okay, those have all been uh, those okay. have come in, and so now we're going to call the auction company and have them pull them. Okay. Which is exactly what happened. Okay. So so maybe we started at eleven o'clock. Obviously, you don't want someone working late or overnight or something like that. So they get in the morning, they make the final list to give to the auctioneer and let them know that if they start at 11, 12, whatever, they make the adjustment. That's exactly how it is done. 11 o'clock is actually the time that it starts. And you want to continue this conversation, okay? So you're saying you can't do it after five o'clock. How often do we have auctions, right? We wanted to have this discussion after this meeting, but I'll keep okay. talking until midnight. If okay. you want to keep defending yourself, all right? We said there's a problem with it, Talk to Matt, talk to county exec, talk, then come and meet with the uh, rules, Paul, sure. Lee, the only the thing legislative that's... chair. No, you're going to start another conversation. Oh, I was just going to continue this okay. one. Right now. Well, I'll keep continuing. I got a bunch of other questions for you. Sure. Well, all I'm saying is that all I'm saying is that if you want the redemption period to go right up to the last minute, as we did, which is a conversation for your side of the house. And yeah, make a decision. Okay. Come to us. We can move on and okay. Okay. move this to discussion. Ms. Benelli. Just to clarify, it is in the law that the county executive is has the purview to pull these things for, for public purposes. Mm -hmm. um, that, and Betsy can give you those laws, but I, I yeah. think that the conversation, um, there's a lot of intricacies to all of this. And I think we need to put the principles together and them to come up with. Plan and you set some time aside in your agenda to be able to discuss that in the future. Because we do the same thing for res reservoirs and uh, water. Exactly. So it clearly states that the county executive has that discretion. All right. So can they just clarify public, public, only for public, what that public services are? Yeah. Did you, did you, did you, I don't have a lot of space. That's all I need. We're going to make a parking lot. It's usually it's open space. Open space, space reservoirs. Watersheds okay. and such. Okay, enough discussion. All in favor as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. So you have a little homework. Yes. Thank you. Eric. And Robert. Okay, so actually only one thing today. Yeah. Boy, you guys get off easy. You guys get off easy today. This is a request supplemental appropriation. <laughs> request supplemental appropriation to the capital projects budget in the amount of four hundred and seventy-five thousand for Orange County Transfer Station Number One to purchase equipment and upgrades at a cost of four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. This project has been approved under the twenty twenty-two capital plan. Is project number fifty-nine, and upon approval, a new capital project will be created in the amount of three hundred ninety-eight thousand seven hundred and fifty. Uh, for bonding and our the state share is seventy six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Motion in a second, please. So move. Hotel O'Donnell. Eric. So this uh, this went through uh, physical services last night. There was a few questions that came up just based on yes. make some models, mm -hmm. uh, lead times, things like that. That um, that Bob uh, did some due diligence on between last mm -hmm. night and today. Sent uh, an email over, and I think there's some additional backup there for you. And then I'll let Bob kind of go through this quickly. Sure. Sure. Um, there's five uh, pieces of equipment involved. Um, I'll go through them one at a time. Uh, there's what we call a yard jockey truck. This is a truck that um, it's a single axle um, truck that can uh, a lot more maneuverable than a an over the road uh, tractor. Or the road. Um, it can fit on the scale with the trailer. So it's very handy. Um, that uh, that truck is made by a company called Ottawa, and it's also made by a company called Oshkosh. Um, that was uh, one of the questions from mm -hmm. the committee, the physical services committee, was that makes some of these things. Um, that's the first item. Um, again, it's it's uh, just more effective for a lower cost to run it to keep it maintained than. Uh, and full size. Um, there's a mini excavator. Um, 
What we're looking at is a Bobcat. It's a model E75. Um, the reason we want the Bobcat is because we have other um, accessories and other parts of, of our organization that we can use those. We don't have to buy a new uh, a shovel, new equipment to fit on the AX. That was the only question on that one. Um, kind of summarize for you guys the, uh, the answers. Uh, the next one is a roll up truck. Uh, it's a truck that uh, has, it's a, uh, has 196,043 miles. It's a 2002, it's a 20, 20 year old truck. Um, we want to replace uh, that one. Um, that's a Mac, it's a diesel truck. I guess the question yesterday was, I had verified that it was a diesel, it is, and it's a Mac. Um, the last piece of equipment is a pickup truck. Uh, it's replacing an 07 with 132,000 miles on it. The old one is a 1500. Uh, the new one we want is a 2500. Uh, stand up better. It's a, uh, what we're looking for is a Chevrolet uh, 2500. The, uh, one, of the, one of the other questions that came up was, uh, we go through, uh, it's called source well, it's a state bid list. Um, we'll request, you know, we'll have a preferred alternative, but if something gets way out there in time and stuff like that, we can, we'll can we change that. For instance, if we're, if we're looking for, in the case of the Chevy, um, we'll go with a Ford 250 if, if that's more available. And we do have Fords. Um, uh, that, I think that was about it. Uh, oh, the reimbursements. Um, our last reimbursement we got was for a 2015. It's our compactors in Newburgh. Uh, we received the money in 2018. Uh, so that was three years. Mm -hmm. um, we were told that reimbursements, we can expect to be four to eight years, depending on... <laughs> Mm, How that, long? Yeah, that was my point. They take a while to get to them, yep. and then they then they have to process them. It can take up to three years for them just to get to it, and then a year. <laughs> the minimum would be a year to process it. That's where the four years comes from. We actually beat that on the this compactors. That was three yeah. years total. Okay, so that was good. <laughs> yeah. So to answer your question from yesterday, I think that was really good. Ask that. Good. Yes. Yeah, I got some information. I suppose if they did it faster, they'd bankrupt the state. <laughs> <laughs> understaffed. Understaffed. Um, so anyway, okay. Uh, any other questions? I'd be glad to. Sure. Just to one answer. one question. You said that uh, you needed to have a single axle truck so it could fit on a scale. Is the yeah. scale short? I mean, uh, I know that's scales. Short, I've dealt with scales for twenty years. Just, we can fit, you know, a full eighteen wheeler. On scale easily. This is what the guys that run the operation told me. Okay, that, and they don't have to unhook and hook it up. It's just you can imagine what's involved. Mm -hmm. A lot more involved. When you got a line of traffic and you got yeah. angry truck drivers, angry garbage men yelling at you. Oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> All right. Questions from legislators, committee members, others present. Hearing on all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next up, Commissioner of Finance. Welcome to the table. So, does the committee want the good news or the bad news first? Bad. Bad. The bad news is this is Karen's last uh, Ways and Means Committee meeting. He called me this morning uh, about 10 o'clock and shocked me. So, Karen. Yes. Um, so, as you broke the news, um, I've actually um, put in my resignation and have accepted a position at another municipality. So, this will be my last ways and means of meeting. But I want to thank you all. It has been an absolute pleasure um, working with you collaboratively to help them. We're going to miss you. Yeah. yeah. It has been. It has been absolutely. Just humbling the work that we do here for the taxpayers. And it has been a privilege, and I will miss you all. And you've always been respectful and kind, and I really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, good luck. Thank Absolutely. You. Best to you. Hopefully, my. And also, like I said, drive carefully because she now is going to have to commute. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and hopefully, my next um, my next venture will have the sales tax plethora that we have here in Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> Makes my job easier. 
Okay, so this is just a report. This is um, so sales tax um, <clears throat> for the month of May. Um, obviously, it's still coming in way over budget. Um, actually, our best month in a very long time, probably since uh, 20, uh, 2021, um, June or July of that year. I think we saw these numbers. But for the month of May, we're almost 60% over budget. And it brings the county share to a $19 million, almost a $19 million surplus year to date. Um, uh, I know it was asked in the past what period of time these retail sales actually occurred. So, and it is very complicated, the schedule that the state presents, but to kind of simplify it, most of these are from retail sales that occurred from March 1st to April 22nd of 2022. Um, are there any questions on that? The next um, month we will have three uh, sales tax payments from the state. And it's a total budget for June of just about $33.5 million. So it should be a big month in June. Mm -hmm. um, if there's no questions, we'll move on to the gross sales tax comparison, the five-year compare. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it just shows what's budgeted over the next coming months. I did um, attend the NYSEC Finance School about a week or two ago, and I must warn you that most bankers and economists are predicting an economic downturn, if not a recession, um, within the next six to 24 months. I think Orange County is really positioned well if that happens because of Legoland and the Commons. Um, consumer demand is still really strong, although um, consumer confidence is decreasing. So um, we'll see how it all plays out. Really, there's a lot of variables right now, you know, given all the money that's out there. Um, I know the Fed is trying to slow down spending um, in order to contain inflation, but given all the ARPA money that all the municipalities are still sitting on and it needs to go out there and be distributed and spent, it's really going to continue to feed inflation. So it's going to be a substantial long term problem. So um, our sales tax numbers, I mean, obviously they're off the charts, but certainly it's reflective of what we feel as a consumer, right? Inflation prices are, um, you know, very high out of the norm, um, and obviously fuel prices are really high right now. So you see it in the numbers. It's good mm -hmm. for the county, but maybe not necessarily good for the individual consumer. So I think, um, you know, going through the summer and the fall, I think numbers will still be over budget, but maybe towards the end of the year, going into next year, maybe you'll start to see a decline. Okay. And then the last chart was really just the graphical presentation of the yep. sales tax, which really just is a nice demonstration of the seasonality effect, how it uh, follows a similar year to year pattern. Although, um, interestingly enough, this year, uh, you see a plateau uh, from April to May and, um, I do know the one thing that we were aware of in May, besides the fact that gas prices are continuously increasing, the one thing that's different is um, in May, typically we have um, the deduction for the aim for the towns and villages, but it really wasn't that substantial of a payment. Um, I think it was about 350,000. So that was um, not taken out this May because it was discontinued. So, but, but it's really, um, the plateau you see from April to May is, is probably just again an inflation and fuel prices um, mm -hmm. and con continued consumer consumer spend. Okay. So it'll be interesting to see if that continues um, or if it starts to decline and follow the normal progression. Okay. Time will tell. Yep. Um, now I did ask you to investigate the gas tax uh, question with people. Uh, talking about gas tax holidays and such. Mm -hmm. um, I had thought possibly, um, obviously gas tax was a component of last year's collections. And I don't know uh, what you can see and what you can't see, what last year's gas tax collection number could have been so that we could potentially offer a gas tax holiday of a, of a certain amount yeah. over, oh, like a cap, right, a right. minimum. So um, I do have those numbers. I, I can tell you the last couple of years. So for 2021, um, Orange County's revenue from fuel tax sales was uh, almost $21 million. Mm -hmm. And that um, compares to the prior year of just about $15 million. Okay. So it did go up substantially. Excuse me? 2020, we were still in 
lockdown? Yeah, 2020 was when yeah. it started. Yeah, that's yeah. true. 2021, most of it, we were still in yeah. lockdown. So, so how much? 15 million? 15, 15 million, uh, just about 15 million in 2020. And in 2019, it was just close, just under 20 million. And in 18, it was 20 million. So it's pretty stable around 20. It has been pretty stable around 20 million with the exception of 2020, where it was lower. Um, obviously this year it will be, it'll definitely come in higher. If you look at the, you know, obviously there's different, there's factors here, right? There's consumption and there's price, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I don't have the consumption numbers, but I can give you the average um, fuel prices for the year. I actually can provide them quarterly if you want. I'm not going to do that here at the table because it's sure. way too much information. But on an annual basis, the average for 21 was $3.04 a gallon. So mm -hmm. if you just think about that now and look at what you're paying at the pump. Um, originally, NYSAC predicted for this year, um, their initial estimates, they predicted a 12% increase in our revenues for this year for fuel sales tax. But that was based off a $3.25 estimated average price per gallon, which we have blown away already in the year. They have right. not, that was their estimate on February 16th. They have not adjusted their estimate based off, you know, more recent numbers than that. So, um, you know, I would suppose this year you're probably looking at a much more substantial increase than 12%. I would say maybe closer to 40%, maybe. I hate to say that. It sounds horrible, but... It's probably right about the number you're going to be at. So we'd have to have some mathematicians or something figure out how to take a gallon of gas, the so, tax that's generated, and then... Well, so here's the thing. 17 counties in the state so far have done some sort of a cap or, you know... A, have they done a cap or have they done... Or a, some a sort of a yeah. holiday. I haven't heard something. anything about a cap, like I'm thinking. Um, so some of them have decreased their rate um, or, or capped it at a gap per gallon cost, right? So they've capped it at uh, $2 per gallon or $3 per gallon. And then over that, they don't charge the tax on it. Okay. So there've been different ways of doing it, but in total 17 of the 57 counties have done something to try to remedy the, the price of gas. Um, you know, there's pros and cons to it, but the people who argue against it say the biggest issue that I've seen is that there is no control over the retailer and ensuring that the retailer doesn't just jack up the price and you never get, let's say you, you want the consumer to save, you, know, you want to cut 16 cents off or something like that. There is no guarantee that the retailer is going to pass that along to the consumer. So that's why a lot of counties probably likely have not done anything like this. It's very hard to control. You're dealing with a private retailer. Um, and it's a constantly changing number that's not really able to be um, monitored. So that's the downside of it. Um, the deadline has just passed for if you wanted to do something with an effective date of June 1st, the deadline was May 16th. Um, going forward, the, uh, counties can still change to, um, you know, capping at two, three or four dollars a gallon multiplied by our uh, local sales tax rate. We can still do it going forward. But um, we have to start and end the elections on the state sales tax quarters. Um, so for us, it would be starting September 1st or December 1st. Okay. And a lot of these are sunsetting on December 31st of this year. Um, and the state typically likes to have a copy of the local law if you were to pass one 90 days before the proposed effective date, which would put you at June 1st for September 1st. However, you can ask for a waiver from New York State Department of Tax and Finance, um, and they will likely um, award a waiver and give you um, reduce that to a 30 day notification. Okay. So uh, this was discussed at one point with the county executive's office, um, I don't know, maybe two months ago or so um, before the, the May 16th deadline. And um, it didn't seem like there was that much interest in doing it back then. But again, this is such a dynamic issue right now mm -hmm. and it's still um, increased a lot more probably beyond what anybody could have imagined. So. Okay. Well, the general rule for me is if you cut taxes somewhere, somebody else or somewhere, some way else, you have to pay it still. But, Mr. O'Donnell. Will you, whoever takes your place, be able to tell us uh, exactly how much uh, sales tax we collected from gasoline at the end of the year? Um, I can tell you right now for the past years. Yeah. Right. We'll be able to do that. So, where well, my mindset is that, you get that figure at the end of the year, 
and try to send like a rebate check to the Orange County residents because this is similar to the hotel tax in that some of us pay it, but most of it is outsiders. So if we do the gasoline tax, everybody's gonna. When you buy and then drive to Pennsylvania. You got it. Well, Pennsylvania people get the benefit of it. Right. I'd rather see our people get the benefit of it and come up with some type of, of uh, rebate check to our residents at the end of the year based on the windfall from the gasoline tax. Something to work on. Right. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Any questions for Karen or Karen? Yeah, I, you know, see, I mentioned this on Monday, by the cap or whatever. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I kind of agree with you with the holiday because it's it's money that you don't have a subsequent year to make up for that. But, I mean, we're getting all this extra revenue. Uh, I don't I don't know how the mechanics should do a rebate to your tax payers. So I just don't know. <laughs> I think there's. Uh, I mean, do we need state legislation if we do have a cap uh, because of the percentage of the sales tax that goes? You so you pass yes. a local law and then you submit it to New York State Department of Tax and Finance and they will likely approve it and then it implement it immediately, whether it's starting on September 1st or December 1st. But September 1st would be the soonest that you could implement. So, well, I, I just think we should do something sooner than later. I mean, people are paying businesses in Orange County, residents in Orange County are, are paying so much for, for um, fuel is, is crazy. And I just think there's something we should try to, to give immediately. And, the state, and, and you know, this is this is revenue way above yes. what we budget. So it's not like it's it's going to hurt us next year if we put a cap or we give a, uh, you know, we set the limit. And I think a lot of businesses will be proof with that, you know, it can be arbitrary. I think they will be because they're getting a lot of pressure and, and they are going other places to get fuel. So. You know, 17 counties are doing it, so it's, they're setting a trend. I just no, think we should wait too long. Yeah. Ms. Totel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know that this is something that I believe Legislator Lujan has suggested uh, and myself for a few months now. Um, Karen, can you, if we were to do it, the rebate, can you give us a, a little bit on the process ease of that? Or I would have to look into it. You would have to believe we've ever done any sort of a rebate, but I'm sure it's possible. I know we'll just my to... town did a rebate at one point, uh, a local municipality, and I it was a long time ago. I'm yeah. trying to well, remember the mechanics. I'm sure it's possible. The county the did it when Bill Leahy was chairman. The county declared a tax holiday and collected no county tax on gas. We've done it yeah. for clothing. Years ago. That's, 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 a, yeah, that's a tax yeah. holiday. I'm, I'm talking about the, to, as, yeah. to, as Legislator O'Donnell said, the rebate. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be interested in hearing about that process if you can let us know. I mean, I can look into it. I, I'm sure it's possible the state was actually had that on their discussion if they were going to do some mm -hmm. sort of a rebate. Um, I'm sure you would just have to design the criteria for the eligibility for the rebate, right? And um, it would have to be a reasonable criteria that we could validate you know, the criteria and make sure we weren't giving it out inappropriately or anything like that. Um, but if it was somewhat simplistic, I'm sure it's definitely something that you can do. something online of people who have a reg Orange County registrants with exactly. a registered vehicle and do it per vehicle. Exactly. You can find out what the state does and bring it to us. Yeah. I'll look into it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's a, I think it's a great month. idea. Mr. Brasher, I just have a question. Can we get an update next month? And sorry, you won't be very good. Mm -hmm. um, on where we are with credit cards. Talk to Commissioner Burpo and be sure we it's going to be within 60 days. Actually, Carrie's going to update because she's been working yeah, on it. Yeah, I mean, but it, it, it's but time. Actually, right I mean, now. Like, how about now? Yeah, yeah. 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 how about now instead of next month? Now is perfect. It's <laughs> sure. a long time what we're doing, Absolutely. especially in DMV. If we got to get up with the times. So we're, per, we're, we're ahead of other counties. Well, DMV should areas. be correct, collecting their state in system. Their They've been collecting, um, taking credit cards. Yeah, so it's on the county yeah. collector side. Yeah, that's their collect them right now. And currently, the contract is in law to be reviewed. And I do know that it's like number two on the county attorneys that's reviewing the list to do. Um, and it, since it is off state contract, it's you know what I've been told that it should be a little quicker than typical to do that. So I do know it is in law right now. <laughs> That's what we always hear. Yep. Or her. <laughs> oh, she's still laughing at the No, no, I that. apologize. The attorney that's working on the contract. The contract attorney, not the contract attorney. Number two on her list. 
I think there's a, there was a rush for a board of elections that was that pushed that to the okay. for a second. <laughs> Good. All right. I think that's it. Thank you very much, and thank, thank you, you for all you've done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. It's been a pleasure. Good luck. You'll be missed. Thank you. Okay. Next up. Hey, Deb. How are you? Very good. How are you? You're not going anywhere. Right? Okay, A is a request supplemental appropriation as per attached schedule A for final budget adjustments necessary for 2021 in various departments. And again, something you do every year. So, yeah, most to do, talk to Thank you. So, this is the year end resolution um, to cover any shortfalls that have happened. Uh, with an end year adjustments and such, uh, it is basically one of the last steps that is needed to close out the 2021 budget year. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions on the schedule or anything? Nothing huge. Yeah, it, it was pretty. I tried to get it done, you know, do a, a preliminary one in January just so that, you know. Mm -hmm. Questions from committee members? All in favor as presented? Aye. Uh, opposed? Carried. Budget update discussion. Okay. So I've given you the budget status report as of April 20, 2022. Um, assuming that the full tax will be posted, which I have no doubt that it will be, uh, there is an increase of revenue of 17 million over the 2021 April year to date. Uh, there is an increase of expenditures of 26 million over the 2021 April year to date. Now, those numbers are going to change a little bit because once our audit is done, the accruals that got posted last year, think it reversed. So there will be a change, and hopefully we'll see that by the end of June, that's the report at the end of June. Okay. Um, there was a question last month about personal services and benefits. They actually, we were looking at the wrong column. So I, I did send that out to Mr. Anagastakis. So I hope you received that information. Um, personal services are up 1.6 million over last year, and benefits are up 1.3 million over last year. Um, that is in part because we have 338 vacant positions this year as of April. Last year we had 328 as of April. So that is a significant savings right there, just in 10 positions. All the number of funding. <laughs> All the number of funded in vacant, yes. Any other questions on the report just, itself? And that, I know it's funny, but how much have we saved so far? 7.1. 7.4. Uh, stupid question. April 1st or April 30th? Uh, this was uh, April 30th. It was okay. run on May 18th. I would have thought, right, at yeah. the end of mm -hmm. end of yes. month, but it yeah. just does say April. And just so you know, with the vacant positions, I, I did a little investigation this morning. We are really trying to hire. So between um, the period of May 19th through April 20th, we hired approximately 145 new positions into the county. For 21 to 22, that same period, we did hire 190 positions. So it is a significant increase in the number of hires. So we really are trying, but you know, with the hiring fees that we did during COVID, um, you know, we built up a huge vacancy, and it, it's difficult. It's difficult. We, we are doing our best. I assure you. Have we hired correctional officers? Have we were supposed to be hiring? It is my understanding that there was a. Physical services test being done this past week, and they were waiting because the list had expired. So you'd have to ask more on to HR on that. I don't know. So yeah. let the people that in the past communicate the physical. Ms. Tata. Thank you, sure. Uh, yeah, how many of these are seasonal type positions? Because I know we have we, we will fund a seasonal position. Yeah. And generally, we start hiring in May, mm -hmm. June for those positions as college and, and high school right. students come out of school. Tomorrow. Again, seasonality wise, it should be pretty much the same, but I can give you that. I don't have that number. I'd like myself. to see like a little, sure. a little sure. uh, part time, full time, seasonal. Part time, full time, seasonal. Mm -hmm. If you could, please. 
And also the monetary. You, you had said we thus far we saved seven point four million. What those okay. positions represent? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, just on. Um, we hired you said one hundred forty five new positions. Well, no, okay. that was from 19, that was in the past year, and I went 19 to 20 because oh, oh, okay. that was prior to COVID. Can you give those numbers again? Sure. To from May 19 to April of 20, 145 okay. positions. Yeah. From May of 21 to April of 22, 190 positions. So, uh, on those 190 positions that they were hired, you said? They were hired. How many were not allowed to be hired? I mean, because I know you put it before the county executive. Right. Um, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know. There are still many outstanding high on requests out there that they just can't hire. Uh, Valley View is a perfect example. Um, I've had to reauthorize high on requests from Valley View because they, they're good for six months. So I've done it probably twice on some of them. You're still, so the county executive is not addressing you? No, they can't. No, 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 they can't hire they can't get they get the yeah. 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 There's nobody yeah. to hire. Yeah, no, like Valley View gets approved automatically. And like I said, I've had to two, even three times I've had to try to, you know, reauthorize high on request because. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Any other questions, Ms. Twetel? Um, at the upcoming job fair that's going on, will we have representatives from each of these departments that have these high requests out there? I, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I think it would be a great yeah, idea yeah. to have that and yeah. at our human resources department there. Yeah. The human resources are can they're at every yeah, I mean I know they're there, but I'm saying yeah. the department, somebody yeah. to represent I, say, I, hey, I can't like, speak on their behalf. Sorry. I believe it's uh, online, Mr. Knob, uh, Steve Knob yeah. is the director. Um yeah, it told us that that the list of employers who will be in attendance, which is over 80, mm -hmm. um, is online. So right. we can probably check it out there if we're interested. I mean, well, we would be on there anyway as the well, maybe, human maybe resources, resources, but I think- Well, would... maybe the individual departments are, I don't know. Oh, well, thank you. Or give them Paul. Mm -hmm. All right, and anything else? Just um, our capital review committee begins on June 1st. And the budget has now gone into the hands of the department for their workforce piece to work on. So we are using our new system. Uh, the budget's going to look a little different this year, yeah, well, um, okay. but, <laughs> but we'll go through it. Um, and it, it, you know, it'll look different. It'll look better. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. the numbers be bigger? <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> All right. Anything yeah. else for Deb? Yeah. If not, motion to adjourn is in order. Thank you all very much. So motion, much. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very. Thank you, everyone.